Hi everybody, this is Angelo Quinones and your Zion Ministries. Zion Ministries is designed to give you dependable and accurate answers that come straight from God's holiness by what the Bible, the Bible, post by e by the way. That means, uh, like, how's it going? In, in modern Greek, post by e, post by e. You know what I'm saying? And so that's just the deal. So, but we're, look, we're, we're looking at biblical Greek right here, and I'm keeping my voice a little bit down because my baby's sleeping, and um, so she's not feeling that well these days. She's only a year and, and ten months, so it's very hard to get her to go to sleep. So I mean, you know, but this is very, very important. Okay, so basically, um, let me start at verse five because you, you're not going to really understand the thrust of verse, at least parts of it, of verse six, unless you hit verse five. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just it. So let's do that here in the NASB, which is a, a, a very, very dependable. Talk about dependable Bible. You understand? So this is just a deal. So over here in verse 5, it says, Have this. Okay, have this attitude in yourselves. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Okay? And it says in verse 6, Who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped. Now, first of all, it doesn't say, okay, this is very important to understand, that he didn't try to make some kind of a coup to become God. That's nonsense, because over here, it says with God, equality with God. So he had the equality already. So why he's going to try to, you know, and he didn't try to do this, you know, um, at all. But the, the text is not even saying that. Okay, why try to commit a coup if you have it already? You understand what I'm saying? For example, let's say a group of people are already, you know, existing as kings. Right? They're king. Or kings. Okay. <laughs> They're not gonna try to make a coup to become king if they're kings already. Does make any sense? That's 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 reserved for people who are not kings, right? Who are trying to you know dethrone somebody to become king or play somebody as king. You see what I'm saying? In somebody else's uh, domain, in somebody else's throne. Okay. So that doesn't make any sense because it's equality with God. So he had it with God. The equality actually in the Greek is. Okay, it's Esau. The Alpha is telling me that's a plural word. That's a plural word. You understand? Know plural. Okay. And uh, so that's just the deal. So he had the equalities. Okay. With God. He already had that. You understand know what I'm saying? If he emptied himself, he emptied himself of something. Okay. The, the glory of the equality. You understand know what I'm saying? Not the equality itself, but the glory of it. Okay. He emptied that. In order to empty something, you have to have it in order to empty. Okay, so if he didn't consider uh, to make a coup for something that he didn't have, well, why does it say that he already had it with God? Quality with God. It's very key there. To teo is in the dative case. We're going to look at that in the Greek. To teo. It's the same construction found and recorded in verse 4 of chapter 5 of Praxis Apostle on the Acts of the Apostles. He lied to God to God. Same same date of case there. Okay, tau omega with the Yoda subscript and de delta epsilon omega with the Yoda subscript. And we're going to check that out, what that is. Okay. Alright, so um, it doesn't say that it's a form of somebody else. He was in a form of somebody else. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say he was in a form of an angel. It doesn't say he was in a form of a creature. It doesn't even say he was in a form of the sun. It doesn't even say he was in a form of Mikael. It doesn't say Has and Marfe uh, Teu Angelas or uh, Michael or uh, Huias or uh, somebody else. Uh, another person or something like that. You know? It doesn't say that. So we're going to look at the Greek and see the importance of the genitive case construction there, Teu, without the article, but it doesn't need a uh, Tu to accompany it or to be written before it, the Theu, because, you know, prepositional phrases like we saw in uh, John 1.1 1, 1, and Genesis 1.1 1, 1, and, and other places like uh, Romans chapter 1 verse 7 in Rome, right, doesn't need an article. You know, Dan Wallace already approached that in his 
uh, 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 you know, Beyond the Basics uh, volume, and also in the article treatment on YouTube. You know, you can see that. You can check that out. That uh, there are ten different ways that a Greek noun could be definite without an article, and this is one of the ten ways right here. Yeah. In Marfe, we're gonna check that out. So it is definite by nature anyway. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't need an article. You have to understand that. As a matter of fact, incidentally, uh, John 1:1c, which I call the Caesarean section, because if you're born again, you're gonna believe in the deity of Christ, the full deity of Christ. You understand what I'm saying? Not a God, but that He's the God. As a matter of fact, God the Father calls Him the God. Okay, and uh, Hebrews 1:8 with special definiteness. So you want definite? You want a definite article? Well, there's special definite. Forget about it. just definite. But special definiteness is recorded in verse eight, chapter one of, of Hebrews. Okay. Yes, he has a God according to servanthood. Zechariah chapter three, verse eight. So verse nine is easy to to explain to the witnesses that you know he has a God according to servanthood. Servanthood, not creaturehood, but servanthood. And throw in there the rest of the sandwich. Okay. You know, the bread being uh, verses 8 and 10, and the, the meat of the sandwich being in the middle there, verse 9. Verse 10, you know, the Father's calling Jesus Jehovah. Tetragrammaton is found nine times in Psalm 102. Throw in there, okay, um, El, which is also recorded and found in that in that verse, in that chapter, I should say, in that, in that psalm. Okay, so he's actually addressing the Son as... Hathaos in verse 8 of chapter 1 of Hebrews and uh, Kurios meaning uh, Yahweh, Kozum Yahweh in uh, verse 10 of the same chapter. But getting back to this, okay, so we have to understand that it was in the form of someone else, okay, we have to see what this verse is not saying in order to see what, what it's saying. We have to get rid of this notion that uh, the, the teaching of Jehovah's Witnesses that it's another form. They like the other form business. Well, the only um, place places that uh, the Greek word Marfe is found is here and in verse 7. Form of God, form of uh, servant. And then if you count the other one in Mark chapter, uh, what, 16 verse 12, you got the third one there. Okay? Or if you want to go backwards and say that's the first one, and then the, the verse 6 over here is the second one, and then verse 7 is the third one. Go on ahead. But even Mark from Missouri, okay, in his notes put an asterisk and mark on Mark 16 verse 12 because he he, he knows that that was probably that was, that wasn't probably uh, part of the original you know what I'm saying at all so he has an asterisk he can't even use that anymore he appeared in different forms first of all it's not even forms in the plural he appeared in different forms it will be in the, 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 uh, in the, uh, in the dative plural in the form he appeared in in, in it'll be many forms for them or in different forms so that's in the plural there's no plural there even if it's, if it's there it's not even plural not even a plural that's what i'm saying so that's out meaning uh verse 12 or chapter 16 of mark you can't even use that because probably wasn't even part of the original so you're down to two. you're down to verse 6 and then down to verse 7 that marfe is even found and recorded in the Bible. You understand what I mean? That's, that's just it. Now, the other thing that it's not saying, it's not saying that um, that he, okay, was in the form, and I already, you know, touched on this, of another person. He was in the form of another person. Like, that wasn't really his form. He was in the form of God, but really that wasn't really, you know, that wasn't his form like that, you know. And the other thing that they like to, well, he's the greatest creation of God. This is the witness of speaking. He's the greatest creation of God. So he's going to have the appearance of, of God. It's some kind of aspect, some kind of, you know, form of God being the greatest creation of Jehovah. He would have that. That's not what he's saying either. Or either, you know what I'm saying? Well... Let's touch upon this, you know, little by little, and this is sort of part one of the of the uh, sort of uh, mega series two uh, on this uh, verse. It's a mini series, it's a mega series, and this is uh, the second mega series on this verse. Okay, on the form of God uh, debate and campaign. Now, uh, let me see if I'm recording over here, and that's just the deal. 
So, okay. Now remember, there's an NASB along with the NIV and the King James. These are great Bibles. But we're going to look at the original Greek, though. Okay? Because as good as a translation is, we've got to check to see if it's there. I talked to a witness one day, and she told me from a white car. I mean, she was talking in a car. For, I don't know, it was outside of the car. It was in Far Rockaway, Queens. And so, and so I gave her this. So she, he was in the form of God. And then she told me that's not even in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. The Bible you're using. In the form of God? It says that. And, right? It says, Has and Marfe Theu Upakon. He was in the form of God. It says it right here. Now, this is one of several places in the Bible that the two natures of Christ are showcased out in the open so everybody can see. You understand what I'm saying? I call it nature A and nature uh, B or nature 1 and nature 2. Don't say nature 1 or nature 2 because then you're saying that nature 1 is really the same thing as nature 2 or nature A is really the same thing as nature B. It doesn't go like that. As a matter of fact, I talked to a good buddy of Mark from Missouri yesterday. It was just yesterday, outside of the house over here. That first person and second person. I said, what is he talking about? First person and second person. It's actually first nature and second nature. Okay? That's what we're talking about. We're not talking about two persons here. If, you, if you're going to say nature... If you're going to say nature A is first person, and then nature uh, B is second person, we're going to have two persons for Christ. Well, now you're reaching into the heresy that was really dealt with by the, Chalcel, the, the council, the council, the council of Chalcedon in 451 AD, where they, you know, hammered out, you know, the two natures of Christ very eloquently, thus stamping out the heresy and the errors of Eutyches and Nestorius that taught that, you know, in the two persons of Christ, right, which doesn't exist, and then the... Um, you know, and in the blending of the natures of Christ, which that doesn't exist. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get rid of that. You can blend the, the natures, thus making him theanthropic in any way. The, the blending of the natures. We don't blend the natures. We can't separate the natures because they're, 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 they are who he is. So right now. You know what I'm saying? Right now. Hupar Kohn is subsisting. Labon, taking. So he has the two natures. So we can't separate the natures from, 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 from him because that's who he is. So we can't separate the natures, but we cannot blend them together and say that nature A blends along with nature B or nature 1 uh, blends along with nature 2. It doesn't go like that. It's not like that at all. We have to distinguish the natures, separate the natures in that sense as different categories, different from each other, yet existing Okay, simultaneously, okay, in one person, which is Christ over here, and that's recorded in verse 5. You understand what I'm saying? So let's get to verse 5. Now, it says over here in verse 5, the, the last part of verse 5 says Christ Jesus, okay? Now, this will be in the date of case, en Cristo Yesu, okay? Now, you may say, well, Yesu is in the genitive. No, it's not. It's in the date of also. Okay, there's, there's one construction for those two different cases. That's, that's the thing about words that don't fully inflect. You're going to have to see, you know, if there's a preposition there or an article to kind of help you out to see, um, you know, oh, there's just a spelling of one of the, one of the uh, 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 words, um, like, like Christ. That's, that's, that inflects it. So it's Christo there. So, you know, Yesu is not in a genitive, it's in a data. But anyway, we can see that when we get into the Greek. And I think that I'll get into the Greek maybe in part two of this second mega uh, series, so that way I can distinguish, no pun intended, um, the what we're talking about. We're talking about sort of English now, um, you know, with the Greek, but then maybe in part two I'll look at the Greek exclusively while, you know, uh, brushing up a couple of things from the English uh, uh, translations. You understand what I'm saying? That was my mother-in-law that sneezed. <laughs> okay. All right, so um, over here it says, in uh, Cristo Jesus. So the first thing we have to say, who is the who referring to? Who is the who referring to? Well, we all know that the relative pronoun Hansa refers to an antecedent and is, is Jesus. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? It's referring back. The pronoun, it, it, pronoun means in place of a noun. 
right? Has, you know the paradigm, has, hey, uh, ha, uh, who, uh, hey, so, who, uh, ho, hey, ho, and han, hein, uh, ha, with an omicron, you know, and that's just a singular part of the paradigm, and maybe it goes something like this, uh, like, uh, uh, hoi, hi, uh, ha, this time with an alpha, then hon, 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 and then ho, hois, uh, hois, hois, and then uh, hus, has, ha, also with an alpha, you know, that's, that's, that's basically the paradigm for the relative pronoun. This is a pronoun, ha, so it refers to something or someone, right? In this situation, it's referring back, okay, to a person, okay, and the antecedent, the antecedent means the, the ancestor of a pronoun, so it refers back. It refers back to, you know, back to uh, Jesus here. That's the antecedent. So, in other words, Haas is connected or linked back to the antecedent, which is Jesus here. So that's, so, meaning, so this um, clause, who being in the form of God, well, that is talking about Jesus. That that relative uh, clause, okay? The relative clause, Haas aim our faith, they will hoop our cone, refers back uh, to Jesus himself. Okay, so that's his form you, you were talking about. We're not talking about somebody else's form, right? Well, he said in the form, in, in who being in the form. Well, the form of what? A tree? A rock? Water? What? The, well, the, you know, he presented an idea, the Apostle Paul, by inspiration. Marfe, form, nature, says the NIV. All right, so what, what kind of form is it? And that's what the genitive is doing, is giving a description of what kind of form was presented by the Apostle Paul, meaning like the idea Presented by the Apostle Paul. Well, what kind of form is it? Of God. That's why it's Teu. Because the genitive has to do. Okay? Remember the, the paradigm for God. You have, you know, Teas, Teu, Teo, uh, Teán. Throw in there Te in the vocative. And then you have Teoi, Teón, uh, Teois, and, and Teus. I mean, that's the, that's the, you know, and then you have the feminine uh side of things also you know they are with an alpha they on with an alpha you know what i'm saying so that's just the deal so you have that and you have two of those found and recorded in uh, chapter 19 of the acts of the apostles you see so that's just it i was talking about the, the goddess you know artemis or whatever her name is you know diana you know all right so over here it says who although okay he existed in the form of God, but it's much stronger in the Greeks of Sistine. It's a part, present act of participle. That means that right at, at the time of the writing of the of the Apostle Paul's letter, Philippians, right? He was existing in the form of God, so existing in the form of God. It's not only that he existed, like in the aorist tense. This is just a one. This is this is completed action. There's no aorist there. It's no completed action. He is existed in the form of God. No. You understand what I'm saying? He is subsisting. At the time of the writing of the epistle by the hand of the Apostle Paul. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of peace, but that's just a deal. And not only that, to prove that he's still man right now to the witnesses, well, Labon, taking, not only that he took the nature, okay? You know, so he tabernacled among us and we beheld his glory, you know, glory. You know, so the Kabod, it says in the Hebrew, uh, uh, one Hebrew New Testament, you know, Kai, uh, Ha, Lagas, um, and the word uh, was made, okay, ain, uh, agenito, uh, sarx was made flesh. Uh, well, you know, it was made, agenito, that's in the Aris sense. But we're not talking about, you know, that now, something in the Aris sense. A done deal, a completed action, an ED word, like jumped and flipped and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about, okay, that he is still subsisting in 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 the two forms but he's still i'm talking about he's he's subsisting at the time of the uh, of the apostle paul he's still subsisting as man and that proves that he was resurrected in the sarks in the flesh you understand what i'm saying that's all there is to it not resurrected in the spirit because he had things to do listen when he left his body and went to paradise he told the man on the cross today you shall be with me in paradise you see, be careful where the witnesses put the comma, okay? They like to change things. You understand what I'm saying? And so, I mean, I think they changed the Bible. They had to change it several times, inserting the word other four times in the text of uh, verse 16 and verse 17 of chapter what? Chapter 1 of Colossians. I don't insert the word other. 
In Vine's complete expository dictionary of Old and New Testament words on page 400, around 51 or 50, it says it has seven Greek words. In Mouse's uh, uh, expository dictionary, you have like five different Greek words, something like that to that effect. Alelan, heteros, uh, heis, and, and vines, you know, loipas, I mean, Greek words that mean other, you got seven under there. None of them appear there, and in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, none at all. None. So they added that there. They had to use the word other to fit with their teaching, to fit with their doctrines. You understand what I'm saying? Just like they used the word in union with Christ. Union. Not there. It just says in Christ. But they don't believe that Jesus could be in the believer, so they have to put in union with Christ. They don't need to put union there. There's no, there's no union uh, between the objects of the preposition and the preposition recorded anywhere. Yeah, that's just it. Well... So, it says over here, who, although he existed in the form of God. So, he already did. It doesn't say he didn't exist in the form of God, but he didn't think of trying to become uh, equal with God. This doesn't say that here. That's changing it around. Oh, he didn't try to make some kind of a cool because he wasn't equal to God. There's no, there's no ooh here. There's no, in, in that sense, like, like saying that he wasn't God. And there's not even, um, it would be ooh for the... Um, for the uh, for the indicative and then may for the for the uh, you know subjunctive right that's why it switches you know may u but you you could even have them you know sometimes you could have the may and the u the the Greek negatives together emphasizing the the not and not and not you understand what I'm saying of the of the so-called Jehovah's Witness fact that he wasn't God and he tried to become like God if that was here. Okay, that would have been the coup de grace for the witnesses, like I said. It would have been the coup de grace for the witnesses in John 1 1, having in Greek, it doesn't have it, but this will be the coup de grace. Okay, anarche, epoiesen, hate as tan lagan. doesn't have that anywhere in the Bible. You see? Nowhere. Nowhere recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Well, I better go, uh, folks, and uh, I'll check you out with, um, I'll bring to you, I should say, um, part two of this uh, second mega series when we get into the Greek now. Uh, we, 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 we found out what, what this verse is, doesn't mean. It doesn't mean the nature of someone else. It doesn't mean that he didn't try to be, be he didn't try to become like God. It's just things are nonsense. But anyway, we'll, we'll bring um, part two of this uh, second mega series in my next session. Please subscribe to my channel. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. But more importantly than all that, please give me a commentary of what you want to hear and what you think uh, you heard uh, in this session is Angelo Quinones giving glory to God the Father, to the Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And that means that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are still alive right now. Okay? He says, I am. Look at that. I am. Not that I was, but I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay, guys? I'm in the Philippines, so sorry for the background noise and the boosters and all that stuff. But don't forget to give a comment on the screen. Take care, guys. Bye-bye now. Bye.